All right. Thank you for standing by. I uh, uh, just got some of my running in for today. <laughs> I think we have it solved. Um, I'm saying a lot of ums. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let me kind of restart and recap. So again, thank you as we work through these technical issues because we did just move. Everything's a new studio, new network. And uh, it's our first live that Tony really busted his tail on to make sure the set was done. Okay, there's a lot of work that's gone into this and then it was all done. Um, while he had some support and help, it was really his brainchild and he mm -hmm. was all the back work and, and blood and sweat and tears and anger and everything else to get this set going to make sure we were ready for you. Um, so big shout out to Tony Mantua. He, there's no one like him in the business, promise you. Um, Hollywood better be listening. Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, we're here, uh, I'm here with Alicia today, and uh, as usual, uh, she's really the star of the show. Nobody likes looking at this guy. Um, but we're going to be talking about some pet products today. And I was going to bring my, my, my uh, Basset Hound Homer, but I knew that today was not the day to be dealing with a stubborn Basset Hound. Um, keep in mind that the products we're going to be doing today are not exclusive to just uh, pet products is just give some ideas on some of the pet products we have available in our web store Some of the stuff you can do is and all these processes will transfer over to other materials Okay, mm -hmm. you can take like our dog bowl here if you want to you can get matching tumblers mm -hmm. from our web store to match your dog's Pet bowl. I know it sounds weird to some of you, but for some some of us are only babies stuff for some people Their only babies are the fur babies um, but Alicia why I catch my breath is going to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing today. Also, please excuse the sound if there's anything in the background here. Uh, there's a lot going on right now, but we're going to try and keep things quiet for you so you can kind of keep steady on what's going on. <laughs> Bear with us. It's going to be a rough one, but they're going to be golden from here. We're going to work them all out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as Aaron said, you know, there's a lot you can do with different pet products. There's a lot of different things you can make on our machines. Um, and, you know, it's the possibilities is endless, um, as we say with everything here. But <laughs> um, one of the things that I wanted to work on showing you guys how to make today is um, if you look back at the table here, um, we're going to be making this little cutout. Um, and you can do this with any image of your pets, of friend pets of client pets, you know, you could even do it, transfer it off of pets and do a portrait. Um, but we're going to have some fun and we're going to do some cute animals today. Um, are we still good? Give us just a second here. We'll fill the space with something. <laughs> um, so if we're able to cut to my computer camera here, perfect. Okay. So, um, as you can see here on the screen, here's kind of a uh, final product kind of thing of how to get this kind of layered paper effect. This one's a little more complex than the one I'm going to be showing you on the machines today, um, but I just kind of want to show you how to do it with like your own photos um, so that you can kind of process things a little better. So this is kind of what we're going for, you know, just a couple layers of colors, gives you that kind of pop arty feel, um, and you can layer the different pieces of paper. Uh, you can do different wood, acrylic, it can really be anything, um, but I'm going to be showing you how to do it with just simple construction paper, really cheap and easy to do, um, and you can make it into this really high-end kind of display piece. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm doing this, I will say, I'm doing this in Photoshop, um, but the same, everything you do, I'm showing you how to do here, you can do in Corel, you can do in GIMP, you can do in other similar kind of photo paint um, programs. Photoshop is what I know best. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, but again, everything that I show you, you can do in these other programs as well. Might be a little different setup, but everything is available there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up an image here. And let me scroll through and find what I want. I've got this image of my parents' dog. Um, little cutie. Her name is Lilith. Um, little baby pit bull. Let's let it load here. There we go. Perfect. Um, as you see here, it's kind of a comp complex image with the background and everything a little busy, so we're going to clean that up slowly here. 
first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and unlock this background image um, so we can play with it as needed. But we're going to go ahead and isolate just the, the dog here. We don't want the background. We don't want that busy noise. If you do want to add a background, you can do that later on. Um, but this background's not very pretty either, so it's not really something I want in the final product. Um, so if we go up to our select, we can do select subject. You could also go in and trace, you know, whatever you need to do just to isolate that. You could do a mask too. Um, this is just what's easiest for me. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste that into its own layer. And then if we hide that original layer, you see we just have the, the pretty puppy there. Perfect. Okay, so once we isolate that image, we're going to go down to the bottom of the screen here. There's a little drop down and it's uh, an adjustment layer. It's a little circle cut in half here. And we've got all these different object options. It's a little overwhelming to look at. Um, but I'll walk you through the steps here. I've got them written down for me as well, just so I remember everything and I'm telling you exactly the right thing to do and I'm not getting sidetracked or anything. Um, and like I said, this can work with pretty much any image you put in here. It's going to give you that pop arty effect. It's going to look really cool when we finish. So if we add, go up and we're going to add, first we're going to add this hue slash saturation filter here. And you can see all that did is just popped up a little, a new little layer. And all we're doing with this, we're taking the saturation slider here in the middle and we're popping that all the way down, negative 100, black and white image. That's all we want to do with this first part. Super simple stuff. Once we have that set, we're going to go right back down to that little pop up here and we're going to do a color fill. So right up top, the very first thing you see here, solid color and it's going to look really really bizarre for a second but we're going to do a solid color and you can do this any color you want it does not matter oh there we go so we're going to do i like the color yellow so we're going to do the color yellow why not <laughs> um if we go down to the drop down here you see this is just a full screen of color it's a little weird it, i mean it took away our image completely but if you go to the mixing up here, you can see all these different mixing options. And the one that we want is hard mix. And you can see that still, we're barely getting that image through. I don't even know if you guys can see it, but it's just like the green of the eyes in the nose. So to fix that, we can go back to this color box down here. And we're gonna bring up the color again and you can just slide around in here and you can see it's gonna bring out more detail, less detail, the different areas that you slide it into. So I'm just gonna find something that's comfortable for me. You know, play around, find what you think looks best for you. You can also slide the color bar here, change the color to anything you want, does not matter. Um, I think I like it just about here. This looks pretty good. We're gonna go okay and then you have that layer on there. We're going to add one more little layer down here. We can go and we're going to do a black and white layer. So right here in the middle, black and white, click that guy and takes away the color there. And that's, that's how we want everything. You can see all these different sliders, but we don't need to worry about those. And then one last little map that we're going to add here is we're going to go to the gradient map. Now we don't want the gradient that's up at the top here. We want to go all the way down to the bottom. It says gradient map. We click that guy and that's going to add again. It's going to look super weird at first. We need to play with it. And again, this is going to be dependent on your image, how much detail you want, um, what colors you want it to be, different things like that. Um, in the end with this part, since we're going to be sending it to the machine, it doesn't matter what colors you make it. For me, it's just a guide of, oh, I'm going to be doing this on colored paper, so I want to map out what colors I want it to be. So if we click on this bar here under the gradient map that we created, you can see we got this little slider. All this stuff up here, don't worry about it. It's just noise. Um, what we want to focus on is this slider. And you can see if we click here, we can add some more stuff. It's going to change the image a little bit. I like to add a couple more in here. 
So we can play with those. And here's, here's the fun part. You can leave it black and white. That's totally up to you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. You can click the color box down at the bottom. And you can see that's going to change the color of what's shown there. So if I go to this guy, let's change this to a blue, do like a darker blue. Change this guy. I'm just going to keep going down the color scale here. Do a green, maybe not that green. <laughs> kind of muted green. And change this guy here. Go down. And again, you can make this whatever colors you want. Um, I like to do things kind of rainbow. It's fun. Um, so that's kind of what I, where I'm at right now. But you are able to, again, play with these sliders a little bit. It's going to bring out different details in different areas and give you a kind of different effects based on what you're looking at there. Um, but this is pretty good. It's a pretty good little layout, but it's still not quite where I'd want it to be to cut it on the machine. It's still a little too busy. There's a lot going on. There's not too much contrast like I want there to be. So what I'm going to go do, if I go to my layers here and I go back to that original image layer where, where it all began, we'll go to that one. Um, and if we go up to our filters, and you can do different filters, you know, have fun, play with it, figure out what works best for you. But what works for me is if we go into the stylize and you do the oil painting, and just kind of play with those settings there. It's going to help lessen the busyness of your image, um, kind of clean things up a little bit, and make it a lot easier to, to process on the machine. So go ahead, hit OK. I'm going to apply just one more on there. Stylize. And we're going to do oil paint. And you can see where that's going to bring out the different, or it's going to soften those, the busyness and the details in there. If I scroll out on this little window here, you can kind of see what it's doing to that original image, making it a little crazy looking, but with the pop art style, it really kind of works. Um, and you can play with the cleanliness, you know, play with the sliders as you wish to find something that works for you. And one last thing you can do to kind of clean things up and get, you know, the image that you really want. If we go to the image settings right here, at the top you go to adjustments, and we're going to play with the shadows and the highlight sliders. Wait for that box to pop up. Bear with me as my program loads. There we go. Perfect. And you see that kind of changes things a little bit, but you can go in with these sliders and change things how you want. And you can see where that kind of helps make things a little simpler. You're still getting the image that you want, um, but it's going to look a lot better um, without all the noise that was originally in there. And again, just play with the sliders until you find something that you think looks really cool um, and something that's gonna translate well to the machine. And it really is dependent. I'm actually gonna cancel out of that went a little too crazy there. Again, if you find, if you do mess it up, it's easy to just hit cancel, just hit the X, start over, no big deal. Um, but really kind of that default setting that's on here, I'm really digging that. I think that looks good. Kind of cleans things up a little bit. And that's kind of where we're at. I, in the final image that I take to the laser, I might get rid of that blue and just blend that blue in with the purple there so that everything's, we just have a few less colors to deal with. Um, you could add more colors. Uh, something that I like to do, um, it's a little easier to do when I'm working on my tablet and not on the trackpad, is hey. to trace around the image so that you're getting dark outlines as well. Alicia, mm -hmm. um, I hate to put you on the spot. Oh no, uh, go for it. Keith, uh, Keith Westfall mentions that um, it's, that, that, that basically they would like to maybe see, could, is there a way that you maybe do a, a, sm a short comparison and corral draw? And corral draw, yeah. Yes. Let's see what I can do. Let's fire okay. it up. So let's pull this guy down. So that's kind of the basics there. Right. Like, 
Keith Westfall mentioned in the chat that it, it, he, you know, uh, that Corral Draw does come with our machines, um, mm -hmm. but we also, uh, under consideration, that we do have many, many users of our lasers that also use Adobe mm -hmm. and the Adobe products. That's what they've used pretty much in their industry uh, before they had our lasers. So um, we do have a lot of content targeted towards Adobe. Um, many of the options are available in Corel. They're just slight comparisons and different menu locations. Mm -hmm. So um, with that considered, we'll see what uh, we'll do uh, some some c comparisons in Corel to show you some of the some of the details and the work that we can do with that software as well. Let's see what we can do here. Let's pull up my picture again. Got pets day, and we got our puppy. Go ahead and open up our puppy image. We got this guy here, and bear with me. I don't have a ton of experience with Corel. I, it's a little bit of a complicated inter interface for me personally, but it is something I would love to learn with you guys. So uh, push me to the challenge for sure. Let's see what we got. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is isolate our guy here. Let's see if we can go up to select. We have a select. Mm, uh, this might be something better for me to try out and do a video on. I don't want to go too crazy. Definitely putting me to the challenge here. We might not waste a lot of time on that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we might just put out some supplemental videos to support I think this. It, I think it would be a good idea. You're okay. going to put me to the challenge here. I, I'm gonna I don't, I don't want to use up uh, all of our time here uh, working through it and uh, wasting. Uh, Maybe, maybe not the best term, but I think the time is better spent. We can kind of do this later and put a better quality video out, which we'll try to do within the week or mm -hmm. so, so to complement this video. So uh, thank you, Keith, and know that we'll work on targeting this content towards both in the future as well. I will work on, I'll put out a how-to for this specific project for you in Corel as I figure it out. <laughs> But that is a good point. I know a lot of you guys out there use that, um, so I will try and work more with that program for you, just so it's a little easier on you and you're not scrambling to figure things out as well. Okay. So we had that guy done, got the colors there. Again, you can see kind of, I did a similar thing with another image, just a cute little bulldog. Love these guys. <laughs> Um, but it's just kind of really just making kind of a little simple pop art. You got the different layers of color and then you can kind of isolate those colors and send it to the machine. You could also just send it the file like that um, and get it set up. But let me show you, let me open it up here, what it's going to look like once we send it to the machine. I will say we can go back to here as well. This is one, like I said, it's something you can go back to and kind of clean up um, and draw over yourself. If you're, if you like to draw, if you have um, like a drawing tablet or an iPad or anything like that, I use my own iPad and just kind of make little, like a little outline to go on top of it. It's not needed. You know, you can go ahead with just those simple colors. Um, but I really like to add that kind of pop to it. Um, and then as you can see here, if I kind of isolate things down, we've got those different kind of levels of color. It's basically just kind of bringing out different highlights and different shadows in your image um, and isolating those into different colors that you're gonna place on top of each other, kind of sh shadow box style. Um, but you can see where those different kind of layers get you. And if you export those out individually as PNGs, JPEGs, whatever works, I like to do PNG. I just like the quality a little bit better. Um, and then if you open up Lightburn or RD Works, um, again, Lightburn is preferred for me, but if you'd like to see more in RD Works, I can fire that up in future workshops as well for you. Um, go ahead and we're going to import our images here. 
and I've got it already set up here and we're going to go ahead and import all these little guys. Again, you can see where I isolated the different colors into their own layers before importing them here. All right, how am I doing? Is everybody still following all right? I know it's a little, kind of a little crazy. I'm going a little fast, trying to figure out my feet <laughs> as we go. It's been a minute, <laughs> so we're, you know, bear with me here. Um, but you can kind of see here, we've got those different outlines. And of course, right now, these are just images. So if I sent that to the machine, it's gonna engrave it and not cut it, which is not what we want. It could be what you want, um, but it doesn't really work for this project in particular. So one of my favorite features in Lightbird, if you go ahead and right click that image, and we're gonna go ahead and hit the trace. Zoom out here, you can see I got this outline of this guy here. And we're gonna take the little slider for the threshold and just kind of take it all the way to the edge. Um, and that's going to give you that nice little outline of everything we want. Go ahead and hit that OK button, plop that image out, delete it, and then you just have that outline. You see over here, now it's going to, now it's set to cut that outline, which is what we want. And you can just kind of follow suit for all of these guys here, you know, kind of zoom it out so you can see it. Go ahead, trace your image, get that where you want it. Those pink lines are going to show you exactly where it's outlining. Looks good to me. Go ahead and hit that OK. And then click on that original image you trained the outline. Then you got your trace. If it's easier for you while you're tracing the image, you can also click down here at the bottom where it says delete image after trace. And then you don't have to worry about is the image still there because um, it'll automatically delete it. I like to keep it there just for reference beforehand, make sure that it's actually trained so that it's not just in there. But if you're worried that you're gonna accidentally leave that there, you can go ahead and keep that, click that little slider down here, delete image after trace, get your image where you want it, check those pink outlines, looks good, hit OK, and then you can see that image behind it is gone. So. Again, bear with us as we get through our technical glitches with this episode. We're really trying to give you nothing but the best. How's this? Oh, that's pretty up in the air. Give me just a second. How's that, Tony? Is that crazy? Is that good? Cool. Okay. <laughs> bear with us here. Um... All right, can I get the thumbs up? Am I good to keep going? Cool, okay. Just wanna make sure. Okay, so as you see, just kind of go through, trace what you need to trace there. I'm gonna go ahead, already had this file pre-made just to make things a little easier. Um, I have things spaced out where I want them to be on the bed. So I'll pull that up here and it's layered puppy art, I believe. No, okay, let's close this guy. Uh, pepperoni, that's what I named it. <laughs> we don't need to save that because we already went through the trouble. And as you can see, here is that final kind of traced out. Everything's traced out perfect for us. We've got that top layer and it goes down from there. And I will say um, the six panel here is just going to be a blank piece of paper behind it to add the full color um, where it's needed. So we've got everything set there. And for, I'm just using, this was like a pack of Crayola construction paper, multicolored construction paper, super cheap, like over 200 sheets of it. So you can go crazy with it, run your test, do what you need to do. Um, but the settings that I found work for me is a, with our 100 watt machines, we're running on the 4836 here, um, is a speed of one, a max power of 20, and a min power of 17. 
and that kind of helped reduce the char on the backside. There's not a lot of overburn. Um, it runs pretty smoothly. Um, I will say since I'm running on pretty lightweight paper, I mean, most papers in general, if you're cutting things out, they are going to tend to fly around. You could turn that air assist off. It's not something I really like to do just for the safety of the lens. Um, I think you're usually safe if, with paper if you wanted to turn that off so things don't go crazy, but it's not something I'd ever really recommend. No, no what she's talking about is with that air assist. Mm -hmm. um, it's better to secure the paper. Uh, if anytime you run without the air assist on, you are putting the lens at jeopardy because it's gonna, the debris is gonna possibly suck right back up into the lens. And then if enough debris create gathers, uh, debris being ash or soot or um, dust gathers on the lens and the laser shooting through it, it can create what I call a hot spot in the lens, which can permanently damage the lens. So. Yeah, you definitely want to be careful to always use the air assist when possible. Um, I have on occasion disconnected the air assist, but I, I, I usually never recommend doing that. So. I don't I don't think I've done it, run it once without it. It's run fine with everything I've run so far. But with something like this um, in the machine, I did tape down all of my pages so that they're not going to fly away as they're running. And because I just want this outline, that is going to stay taped down. And everything inside, you'll probably see it when it starts running. It will kind of fly around, but we don't need any of that. It's gonna go in the recycling bin afterwards anyway. So if I go ahead, I've already sent this to the machine again. We have that set to line. We want it to cut, not engrave. I've got everything spaced out the way I want. Um, and I had that speed set to one the max power is set to 20, and that min power is set to 17. This is a pretty lightweight paper. I would recommend using a cardstock if you want to do something like a shadow box like this. Um, the, the Crayola paper that I'm using is just regular construction paper. It's pretty floppy, not super thick. Um, but what you can do to help if that's something you're going to use um, is add layers of acrylic um, in between, just like an outline or a border would be fine. Um, and that'll give you depth in between and it'll kind of keep it sturdy for you. Um, a little more work, um, the cardstock would probably get you a crisp enough and a thick enough end result. But this is pretty good, especially if you're just gonna test it again. This paper is super cheap. I think it's been like five bucks on the 200 pack of it. Right, so yeah. if you're gonna test it out, that's what I would recommend doing. Um, not really any fault if you mess it up. Not going to feel too bad about it. <laughs> um, but I've gone ahead. I've sent that over to the machine here. And I've got everything. I've got my origin set. And it should be in focus. I'm just going to double, triple check. Because um, we don't want to run anything without it being in focus. All right. We're good. Perfect. Go ahead and get that set there. We'll open up our file. We've got the puppy file. Perfect. We're going to do that. Close our top down. And go ahead and hit that start button. And there it goes. Really, really smooth and easy. And again, the little stuff, the little cutouts will blow around. Um, but we're just going to throw them in the recycling bin anyway. So. Uh, speed of one, uh, max power 20, and then min power 17. Okay. That's what worked for this material and the 100 watt machines. I right. always forget to mention so, what machine we're using. Uh, <laughs> Renee asked, and thank you for joining us again, Renee, um, what settings would you recommend for an 1812? Really, with um, paper, cardboard, poster board, stuff like that, um, she, you can run similar speeds with an 1812. You could run. Um, you can run a one speed and you can run a, a 50 power, you can run a, you can run a hundred power. Uh, I was once at a show, it was a woodworking show, AW, AWFS, and I can't remember if it was, well, I always get the two mixed up because one's in Vegas and one's in Atlanta every year. And it was the one in, a, in Atlanta the one year I was at. And I had a customer come up and mention, well, it's a too bad you can't cut cardboard with this. I said, well, what do you mean? What makes you think that? And the customer said, well, 
they were just at another company's booth. I'm, I'm not going to say which company that was. And they said that they couldn't cut the cardboard because they were worried that it would just catch fire and burn. I said, that's really interesting. Hold on a second. So I reached underneath our, our table that was covered where we had boxes of all our show stuff hidden away. And I pulled a, a box out and ripped off a piece of the box and laid it on the, uh, laid it on the uh, 4024 that we were using at the time for the show. It was a 100 watt machine. And I set the speed at 10 and the power at 100, 100%. And I cut circles. And I cut about five circles in a very quick amount of time. They're like, mm -hmm. and you couldn't even see a burn on the edge. And I, I explained to them, I said, well, the way the laser energy is working, I mean, you, you, it's hard to get more accurate with, it, with an actual blade. So um, when, you're, when you're cutting the paper and stuff, as long as you're staying in focus, then it will cut through paper and cardboard very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, just dialing back helps you maintain that a little bit. Uh, my only concern with running higher powers on, on the um, construction paper and the stuff that will blow loose is if it's out of focus, it will definitely have a, a larger surface of heat, which could ignite it then. So running on an 1812, I guess the, the long answer to the, the short answer uh, in converse to the long answer would be I would probably run at maybe a, a one speed and maybe a, a 40 power with a 30, 35 uh, um, min power um, if we're looking at min max. So, um, but you can, it, it's not like there's, it, speed and power settings are not, um, are not strict. They're very, they're, they're more like guidelines. Mm -hmm. So what works for you, you might want to try something different. Play with it. I mean, if we tell you that, you can run it at one speed. I can tell you, you can probably do the same thing at a 15 speed and a 60 power and you'll be just as happy and it'll be a little bit faster. Or if you want to watch it and make sure it stays a little uh, uh, more easy to observe, then you run it at a lower speed and watch it that way. But there's nothing set in stone with the speed and power settings. So. And again, with this material, since it's so you know cheap and easy, you've got so much of it. Um, like I said, this came in like over 200 pack play with it run little test squares you know just make a sheet of squares that you test with different um, speed and power settings I would say don't adjust both the speed and the power at the same time because you're not going to know which one that you need to adjust later uh, or which one's affecting what so you know if I'm running at the speed of one and the power of 20 and I don't quite like or it's a little too intense I might bring that power down just a little bit with that speed um, before I kind of go either way but I think that's how I would go about testing um, but yeah just run a couple of little test squares with light burn it's really easy um, if we go back to my computer screen here I can just show you super quick because you have all these cool little colors down at the bottom you could just really easily here's a square do another color here's a square and then we'll do a green one. Oh, that one's green <laughs> we'll switch to a yellow Here's a square. Change that guy. But you can see you can change the color. So we have three different guys here. And if you go over to the uh, cut and layers section over here, you can change those all to line. And you can apply different settings here. So we could do a speed of one. And then the 2017 here. And then for the yellow square, you could again keep that speed consistent, but let's go down to 18, 15, you know, and kind of play with things that way. You can make just a little grid and kind of experiment. I will say that's one of my favorite things to do if I'm working with a new material, um, especially if I'm engraving and I want to see how the different depths um, and the speeds work on different things. Um, it's just kind of make little test grids of whatever I'm engraving and doing different settings there um, so I know what's going to work perfect for me. So again, yes, with the speed and power I mentioned in the chat, uh, it's just play with it, okay? Mm -hmm. It's okay to reference a guide, okay, but it's similar to learning a language. It's always best to immerse yourself and and trial and error it out if i if i walk through Mex if i walk through a foreign country with a, a book of that language 
and keep reading things out of the book. I'm not going to learn the language, but if I if I just experience it and 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 figure out the cause and effect of what I do, if I say things wrong, if I do things wrong, I'm going to see that oh, that was an adverse effect. Now I adjust the power down, like. Alicia said, we only adjust one at a time, because if you adjust both the speed and the power at the same time, I call that chasing your own tail. I watch my, my basset hound do it all the time, it's hilarious. <laughs> and he's entertained by it, but he always feels like he wins when he catches his tail. Right. But anyways, you adjust one at a time so you know what the effect is, what, what, what the effect is of what you're adjusting. So, but yeah, the more you adjust the speed and power, the more you kind of go independent and figure this stuff out, the more you learn, um, how you want to run things. People ask me all the time uh, when I mention, I, just, I can just look at something and know, oh, the speed and the power of that's gonna be a 28 and the power is gonna be a 62. Like, how do you know that? But like, just from doing it for all the years I've been doing it, I've been doing it for 10 plus years now, and it's just, it's, it becomes like a fluent language after a while. And it's also kind of, I call it the, lasers, the laser owner's curse where everywhere you go in public, you touch windows and glass to see, is that a sticker or is that lasered? Oh, that's lasered. Oh, I can see the, I can see the scan gap on that. Somebody lasered that. They didn't do a very good job because they had too, too big of an interval. Or, you know, it's, I call it the laser engraver's curse. Or you just look at something and be like, I can laser that. I can laser that all day. But anyways, so. <laughs> I'll say I do that all the time. Like, if I go to Costco with my boyfriend, we're looking through the furniture section. I'm like, well, that's really cool, but what if, it had this on top <laughs> there's you'll never look at just a blank object again this the same again looking at this table we're using right now I, I really need to figure out a way to make that a little more interesting I think <laughs> I think we could put a big like, eagle or something on it um, any I, other we're still we're still going still running a little yep. bit yep we still got some time. Any other questions or comments or anything anybody wants to know in the chat? Are we getting excited for LaserCon? Because I'm getting Laser excited. LaserCon, <laughs> if you are not registered for LaserCon, uh, LaserCon is at the Red Rock Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, hats off to um, Elena McLeod, who locked that down for us and is running around like a chicken with her head cut off. She does that anyways. <laughs> um, but more so than usual to make sure everything is going to be right for it. But the venue is, is so beautiful and it's going to be such a good time. I think it's going to be potentially one of the most laser con, fun laser cons we've had. <laughs> one of the most laser uh, con support. laser cons. Right, yeah. <laughs> one of the most enjoyable, fun, entertaining, um, educational, uh, memorable laser cons we've had to date. It's just going to be a great venue and a great time. I'm very excited. I know we've got a lot of good people showing up there um, to do different demos. Um, and I know me personally, if you like listening to me talk, um, you like seeing the cool things I come up with, you want me to make something cool for you, I'm going to have my own little station there. Bring me something you want to see engraved. I'll do it for you. We'll figure out a way to get it done. <laughs> so I'm excited. It's going to be my first convention with the company here. So it I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be a really good time. Paul C asks, can you use the Affinity Pro on these engravings? Affinity Pro. I guess, Paul, I guess I, to answer your question, uh, <laughs> I'm going to Google Affinity Pro. I think, is that one of the photo, it's another. Photo, it's another photo, photo editing software. That's something uh, I'd have to look into, but I'm assuming it, I mean, everything I used in Photoshop is very basic photo editing. So I'm assuming. So looking at it, mm -hmm. um, just briefly, um, that's a great question, Paul. Yes, instead of Corel, can you use Affinity Pro? So you can use Affinity Pro, you can use Corel Photo Paint, you can use Adobe Photoshop, you can use uh, Microsoft Paint. Just, you can I feel use like you can figure it anything out. <laughs> that you can create a a pixelated image with, and when I say pixelated, we're working with, or vectors, sorry, vectors or uh, pixelated images like bitmaps or JPEGs or PNGs, uh, even TIFF files. All this stuff is in some way compatible with what we're doing because however we get to the final result is up to you as long as we have a compatible final result. 
So as long as it's not saving it in some proprietary foreign uh, file extension, then absolutely. So as, as long as we have the build, ability to save it as a bitmap or a JPEG or a PNG, a TIFF file, uh, um, getting into the vector world, and we have DXF and AutoCAD files. So as long as you can use stuff like that, whatever software you're comfortable with to get to that endpoint um, is going to be fully compatible with our machine. So. Like I said, too, I did, you know, a lot, I did the background work in Photoshop for the image that we're cutting. Um, but I did also go in on my iPad. I use um, Procreate for drawing, and I did an outline around that as well. So you could, if you wanted to take that image and draw it yourself and do these different layers of colors in the drawing, rather than going through and editing the photo, if that's something you're skilled at, you can do that as well and just transfer that over as a PNG or a JPEG or whatever, and you can trace that directly in here. Um, I, and so it's really, I don't want really to, versatile. I don't want to gloss over what she just said. She just mentioned Procreate, which is an <laughs> app on iPad. Okay, I have that program on my iPads at home. My um, my left-handed daughter, she is a brilliant artistic mind. She's an athlete, but she's also left-handed, very artistically minded. She uses that app all the time to create and draw images. Again, the app is called Pro create all right um but that y if you want to do that on an ipad you can still get the same end result to bring it into uh our software now obviously we're going to be offering videos in our coverage it's going to be focused largely on corel draw mm -hmm. that are the corel draw suite products as well as the adobe uh creative suite products because we do use both and uh our customers are probably fairly divided, um, I, I wouldn't say evenly, but uh, we do have a large amount of Adobe users uh, in comparison to our Corel users. Um, those are the most popular. But of course, if you're using Inkscape or Affinity Pro, as long as you can translate into what those programs offer, then um, yeah, you're not limited from using those programs. So, sorry about that. Oh no, <laughs> you're fine, yeah. I mean whatever you're good at you can you can transfer it to the machines really if you're good at drawing if you're if you just found a photo on your phone like i said that was just a picture that my mom took and sent me she wanted to see it done of her puppy so it's really easy just throw it in there throw a couple couple filters on there and then you got rainbow puppy you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a cell phone photo you don't need to go out and take professional photos either it's really easy just to kind of play with things until you get something you like so, so. while we're waiting on this to finish i want to go look at a couple of these products we have done over here already this is uh this is something right here this is actually available on our web store these bowls right here we have these in all different colors um, that are available. We have, uh, along with our tumblers, and uh, we have tumblers, we have these dog bowls, um, and a lot of product, uh, we have some thermoses, some tumbler thermoses, they're available on our web store, as well as- The cast acrylic uh, Cast acrylic, we have cast and extruded acrylic available on our web store, mm -hmm. different size, size and shapes. Alicia made this, this is my <laughs> Homer, she took a photo of my Homer and made this. Homer is a basset hound, a full-blooded, stubborn basset hound, but he's... Uh, he's, he's just too cute. <laughs> um, I sometimes like him more than my kids, but that's expected. Um, and then this is kind of the final product of what she's making right now, but mm -hmm. it's glued to acrylic right there. So it's a... What do they call that? Um, kind of like the... Kind of shadow boxy. Shadow is boxy. What, the best way, I've come, right. yep, best way I've come to describe it is like a shadow box. Um, again, you could do that with, if you use the cardstock and use like foam spacers, you won't need the acrylic. I thought it kind of added a nice little edge to it around the sides there. If you look at the acrylic, it makes it a little well, pretty. You know, so. I wonder what this would look like <laughs> if we put this on an LED base. I think that would be super cool too. Yeah, yeah. we should get into that later. And of course we also have, this is a, a granite tile, mm -hmm. okay. Um, our parent company is also Supernova International. so. Uh, we have a lot of granite pieces, smaller granite pieces, available on our AP Laser web store. So if you go to aplaser.com shop, 
that's our AP Laser Web Store. But you will have endless amount of, of granite blanks and other materials, um, as well as machine parts and accessories and all kinds of stuff that we're just constantly adding to. Um, even scenes and elements, if you want to go through scenes and elements for stuff to add, if you go to our AP Laser Web Store, there's, it's just, um, like I said, we're constantly growing it. We're adding new products uh, almost every week. And um, we're working on being, having all the tools that you might want um, to, to or, and need to, use, to uh, expand your um, possibilities or the, the endless possibilities with the AP Laser. Our web store team really, they're really trying to put something together. This can be your kind of one-stop shop. You know, you got everything you could possibly need, um, you know, in one place. So you don't have to go running around scrambling, oh, but where do I get this? Where do I get this? Where do I get this? You know, um, we're really trying to turn it into something that's really easy to use um, for I, everybody. I have, from Gina Perry and Paul C., how did, did you paint Homer in what paint? And Paul C. asked, how did you get the color in, on the acrylic? Yeah, so the, let me see if I can get this up here. If not, I'll kind of explain it as I go. But if I flip this over and you can see, I kind of added magnets on the back here too. So you can kind of hang them on something nice. Um, but uh, the back is, this is where I engraved out. So that was the image engraved. And so the paint stuck to it super nicely. Um, and I just used basic acrylic craft paint. Nothing fancy. You, you can use any craft store paint and it kind of fills in there um, and I just this is the part that I engraved out so it stuck a little nicer than just on the plain acrylic um, but you flip it over and yeah so it's 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 a really simple uh, process and it could look really good if you just left that engraved um, something else cool you could do is paint it beforehand like if I just painted it like a solid black um, and engraved out different areas um, that could potentially look really cool as well um, but Frank really says let's hit the products. thumbs up button they're doing a great job today thank you Frank yes please hit the thumbs up click the subscribe if you're not but also maybe more importantly than subscribing is also clicking the bell mm -hmm. and turning on the notifications so you can be notified each time we go live because we all get very busy when we're submersed in our daily lives with our lasers and our business and everything that sometimes we'll forget, but if we get that little notification that pops up to remind us that we can jump on real quick and you won't miss um, Alicia's uh, amazing presence in my, <laughs> um, in my annoying voice. So it's, uh, uh, I've heard some, I've heard some uh, talks on my laugh too, that apparently I have a signature laugh. Uh, if it's the same laugh that my kids make fun of me of, I, I apologize. But. <laughs> I will say, uh, leaving us a like, sharing our content, um, subscribing to the channel, it really helps us as well. So we do appreciate it whenever you can do that. Um, it means a lot to us. I know personally it means we're doing good. So it means you guys appreciate us and what we do. <laughs> and we really try to gear this content towards whatever you're looking for. So um, what's that email they can reach out to as well oh, for any questions, concerns? APLaserLive AP at APLaser.com. Send us any questions or, or ideas or content you want to see. That's APLaserLive at APLaser.com. Alicia, can you show us, uh, I think the job finished? I think it did finish. Um, it's kind of hard to pull out of here. <laughs> but I, it's pretty much the same idea as what we have on the table there. It is kind of messy to clean up. I will warn you about that. If you take a piece of tape, Kind of sticky it to your hand it's really easy right. to pick up those small yes. pieces there like frank but said earlier from pops custom signs and laser designs he says uh invest in in a painters buy stock and painters tape because yep. we go through a lot of it oh so. yeah <laughs> you just I take mean, just a little bit wrap it around your hand backwards and just pick it up ba -ba -ba boom i mean just taping this guy down took a lot honestly so <laughs> but not super well put together exactly but you can kind of see if I put it under the light here, maybe kind of where those layers get you a little bit. But again, looks a lot nicer on that final product there. But that's kind of the idea you're getting. Um, and that ran super quick. Again, super cheap material gets you a really cute product. But I think that's, we got it done. And I think that's pretty much where we're at today. Anything else you need to add? Well, 
I think we're just about out of time today. Thank you all again for, for bearing with us as we work through this. Um, I promise that eventually we'll have one without any technical errors. I don't have to promise when, I just know that it will happen eventually. Um, as usual, if you have any unasked questions or if you think of something later, you're like, hey, I want to see this, or hey, how did you do this? Shoot us our email at aplaserlive at aplaser.com. That is a mailbox that our, we have a lot of our team on that we can uh, make sure that we get your answer question or get you to the right department or person that can answer the question for you. Um, and Frank says to see us next month. Are we waiting a month? No. no. Next no. week, right? Next month at LaserCon. Right. He's going to be there. Oh, yeah. See you in person yeah. next month. Right, Frank. Right. <laughs> uh, I, but don't... Don't forget, we'll be back next week. Yes, we we're will. We're doing this. We're back on schedule to do this on a uh, fairly regular weekly basis. Um, there may be a few exceptions that work in depending on holidays or conflicting schedules. But either way, our plan is to do this each week. And if you haven't signed up already for LaserCon, please, please, please um, it's get, well with our, worth get with it. your salesperson and find out how to can you sign up for our LaserCon. It might be on, I think it's on our website as well. Um, but Sign up for LaserCon. It's going to be a great time. If anything, it's a reason to go to Vegas and write it off. Come on, people. <laughs> go to Vegas and write it off. And it's not on the Strip. It's in a much, it's in a very beautiful part of Vegas up by Red Rock, uh, by, at Red Rock Resort. So it's going to be a really good time. I promise you. All right. Um, I think thank you again, Alicia, for joining us. Thank you to Lee and Tony, our amazing production team, for keeping this going. And we will see you next week.